Marilyn Voss Savant is a national columnist, author, company executive, and by the way, a genius. Tested at 10 years old, her record IQ score of 228 was shrouded in secrecy. But in 1986, word got out, so she landed at the top of the Guinness Book of World Records smartest people in the world list for both child and adult IQ scores. Since then, her super genius status has kept her in the news and given her international fame. While her IQ is more than double that of a normal person, she's much more than a score. Savant has been writing a question and answer column called Ask Marilyn for Parade Magazine for 30 years. The syndicated Sunday magazine is read by roughly 80 million people in the U.S. When she's not entertaining questions, she's also a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and an avid ballroom dancer. Joining us now to talk about her extraordinary life is Marilyn, and thank you so much for coming in. Hey, thank you. So I mentioned Shrouded in Secrecy. Do you think it was right that your parents didn't tell you right off the bat, hey, you're, you're off the charts with this number? Oh, actually, that wasn't Shrouded in Secrecy. You mean from the world, not from me. Back when I was a kid, I was tested back when I was uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and on oh, into adulthood. I've taken a lot of tests throughout my life. But back then, when I was uh, 10 years old, that, that was the score that you mentioned. There have been scores since then. Um, it wasn't any, anything new to me. My parents knew, my friends knew, my teachers knew, I knew. I just thought, uh, I thought there were a few more people like me in the world. You know, I knew what it was like. Uh, but it turns out that there weren't. That was the, the only odd thing, I suppose, that people didn't tell me at the time that it was really a rare score. I thought that there were quite a few people like that, and actually, I still do. But you know, <laughs> at the time, it wouldn't have mattered much if I had paid more attention to that because at that time, it wasn't thought that women were suited to do anything in particular with their intelligence. So I wasn't encouraged in any way whatsoever. You know, one, I, I saw an interview with you where you said uh, you had permissive upbringing. Your parents were in a sense, uh, you'd go to them with a question, well, you, you go find it out. Uh, they kind of sparked uh, that uh, interest in you to, to seek out knowledge and curiosity. Uh, uh, can you talk to me about the difficulty of parenting a, a super genius, and how did they respond to it, do you think? Well, I don't really think they paid a lot of attention to that. You have to understand my background. My grandparents were coal miners. One of my uh, grandfather's was killed in the mines. Another grandfather was injured so badly in the mines he could only walk with a cane afterward. My parents were immigrants from Germany and Italy, and they weren't thinking about focusing on the kids at all. The whole idea was to just be independent, earn a living, and no one really paid much attention to me, actually. As I said, mostly because I was a girl, and I accepted that. Did you feel different at all, though? You know, I think we all feel a little bit different at times. Uh, but I, I, I felt different in the sense that we all have this unique, these unique qualities. I felt that I had mine. And everyone, people liked that. They respected me for that. The way we respect people for their particular skills and abilities. Uh, one thing that I noticed in particular, though, that at the time and then later throughout life especially, people that we think are very smart are not necessarily very smart. They are more likely to be educated in their particular field or very experienced in their careers. And we confuse that with smartness. So when we call upon experts, we hear them say whatever it is they have to say. But that doesn't mean they have any analytical ability. That doesn't mean they have the ability to process the information at hand. That's really more what intelligence is. I've even heard you say uh, that perhaps you shouldn't pair the two words best and brightest because they aren't necessarily the same thing. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's true, too. You know, when you think of um, scientists, for example, people tend to think that scientists are the smartest people in the world, and the smartest people in the world should become scientists. I disagree with that completely. When I look back at my own life, uh, when I was a kid, I'd mentioned to you that no one gave me any encouragement, which is, uh, this, this is not a complaint, this is a fact of life. Uh, it's not a big deal, it didn't bother me then, it, I don't really think it bothers me now. Uh, but at the time, as I said, uh, women were thought to be suited to do anything in particular with their, their intelligence, with the one possible exception, 
would be, if you were smart, you'd go into the scientific field naturally. And no one said that to me, but looking back, that was really the, the only option, if I had options. And uh, I, back then, <clears throat> I couldn't imagine looking through the world, looking at the world through a microscope or even or a telescope. That was anathema to me. I just don't feel that I could that I could have focused that tightly on something all of the time. Fine for school, fine for for certain limited tasks, but not as not as a worldview. I wanted something much broader than that. If I had, you know, looking back, if I had it all to do over again, or if I could just have somehow had some um, so, some maturity when I was, you know, 13 or 17 or whatever, I'd become a politician. Now, politicians are not synonymous with smarts, I know. <laughs> well, I was going to say, we're seeing a couple of <laughs> right. candidates out there that I'm not sure at your IQ level. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but wouldn't you rather see a really smart person in front of a microphone? Instead of, as I said, looking at the world through a microscope or a telescope. That's genius. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you about uh, finding your way as a genius, because uh, I, I can count uh, amongst my friends, most of them, uh, I've had the conversation where they're like, oh, my God, my boss is an idiot. So... Um, <laughs> And we're just regular people. So that I could be. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'd argue with them. But I'm just wondering, as a genius, how difficult it must be to go to work each day and just not have, you know, mental gymnasts making the decisions and you're kind of the worker oh, bee under them. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, the world isn't, isn't like that. We don't necessarily have uh, smart people running the show because they may not be social people. They may not be organized people. They're all different kinds of skills. We all have this, have this uh, mix of uh, mix of skills. I notice in particular that uh, sometimes I feel pretty alone, and sometimes I could, you know, that can especially happen when I'm alone. You know, in a excuse me, that can happen when I'm in a room full of people. That's one of the times that I actually feel alone. But as far as uh, being, Why is that, do you think? Well, there's this feeling that if I, if I need answers, if I want to turn to someone, I really don't have anyone to turn to. I do the best I can. I have to accept that. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that we, that we all need to do that. So having a high IQ, is it a burden or a gift or both? Oh, it's an absolute blessing. It's never a burden. I take it back. If you're on an airline seat next to someone who knows your name, then, then it's a burden. Believe me, it's, it's a real burden. You have to pretend it, you know, go to sleep. But other than that, <laughs> it is a blessing. It is a blessing privately, personally, professionally, in every way. Let me ask you about uh, your marriage, because I think it's, it's this unique marriage where it's the heart and the head. I mean, you're, <laughs> it, 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 and you know why I'm saying that. I mean, your, your husband uh, clearly has made his mark in the world, too, with the, the, the Jarvik uh, device, which is obviously keeping people alive. Um, so clearly a very a bright man. Um, did he feel intimidated uh, dating you? I mean, what was the relationship like? And, and what was it like finding somebody who you felt comfortable with uh, on an intellectual basis? Ah, uh, well, he is intimidated by nothing, by no one. I can't possibly intimidate him. I would enjoy doing that. I think it would teach him a lesson now and then. But, <laughs> but no, uh, he can't be intimidated. Uh, that's something that we have enjoyed very much, t very much together. The, the intellectual give and take. However, I have that with a lot of people. I have communication with people all over the world, really, through the column that I write for a parade magazine, which is, its reach is vast. But I have this communication with so many different types of people. People who, are, who think emotionally, people who think rationally, people who are looking for advice, suggestions, inspiration, support, 
I hope I provide that, I think I do, to a lot of people, people with very little position and people with significant positions. And so this is a very rich intellectual life that I enjoy, and I hope I'm doing some good with it. I do the best I can. Let me ask you about that. How did it start, the column? Oh, Parade was writing an article about me, and so when they did that, the editor, someone there, I think it was the editor, just had the idea, uh, well, let's ask, uh, let's ask Marilyn some classic questions of the, I don't know how many inches can dance in the head of a pin variety. Uh, they see questions that have that have per perplexed and confounded uh, scholars and philosophers for centuries. We're going to ask you those questions, Marilyn. I said, excuse me, but how how much of an ego do you think I have that I'm going to be able to just spin off a paragraph and answer something that people have pondered since Socrates? No, I'm not going to be able to do that. But if we, if the readers would like to ask some questions, fine. Let's do that. Let's just see what happens. And so it turns out they got a flood of questions. And they were pl very pleased with that and said, well, maybe we could tiptoe into writing a column. Would you like to try it again? So I did. And that slowly turned into something. And so it, it, it turned into a column whereby now, as I said, through, through parades, Parade's saturation of uh, uh, of the of the people here in the United States, plus, as I said, seeding this throughout the world. I hear from people everywhere about all kinds of things. So, it's great fun for me. You mentioned there are problems that need to be solved. So let me let me pose this question to you, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Let's say uh, you weren't born when you were born. Let's say you were born three or four years ago. Do you think that a, a, a smart girl growing up today has, because you, you talked about how much wasn't expected of you because is, is, you were a girl you know, growing up. Do you think that dynamic has changed or, or does there still need to be more of an evolution? Are smart girls now treated differently than smart girls when you were a little girl, do you think? Oh, absolutely. They're treated, they're treated better. Uh, but women, the women, now you mentioned being born three or four years ago, so that's, that's a, you don't know what's going to be happening in but, 25 years. But is there a, a difference still between, are smart men or smart boys still perhaps on a pedestal above girls, or is there more of a parity now, would you say? Mm, I think they're still on a pedestal, and I can understand that in some ways. Uh, but you don't agree with it. Who would, right? Well, one of the bad things is that women are their own worst enemy in some ways. In other words, uh, when women play up sex appeal, which they virtually all do, uh, it's terribly damaging to them. Now, in certain fields, fine, of course, entertainment, um, if one's going to be a singer, a model, an actress, there are lots of places where sex appeal, in other words, attractiveness, is part of the package. That's fine. They do that, and, and the men do that, too. But in, in business, in, let's say, politics, and lots of other areas, when the women are attempting to wear a great deal of makeup, there's the hairstyle, and we all know what, you know, what, what that means, when it's, when it's done in a way to look physically appealing, it makes them look lightweight. And a huge number of women are doing that. And until they cut that out, they're not going to have parity with men who are sitting there looking the way you do. You know, you look like your real self, uh, presumably. Well, yeah, I realize that. I have that. zero sex appeal. That's the <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, the men on the air are wearing a little bit of makeup, too. But the point is just to smooth it out and, and look natural. Uh, but the women are doing that. They're, they're appealing. You know, they're attempting to look physically attractive. Let me ask you one final question because we've got to go. But uh, I tend to every once in a while lose my keys. And then I walk around the house saying, I'm such an idiot. You know, where did I put those? Have you ever once uttered those words? Because obviously, in your case, it would be a lie. Oh, <laughs> I, I do that all the time. Perfectly normal. Nobody should worry about it. But I realize that as soon as you're something like 50 years old, the first time you lose your keys afterward, you think, 
Oh my gosh, I'm going downhill. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just get as much mental exercise as you get physical exercise. Oh wait, maybe a whole lot more than that and everything will be fine. Marilyn, what a delight. Thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And now you can watch Full Frame on our mobile app, available worldwide on any smartphone for free. Get the latest news headlines and connect to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Weibo. Search CCTV America on your app store to download today. All of our interviews can still also be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Simply email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in New York City. We'll see you next time.